Welcome to Manhattanville College, a private institution that focuses on the student as a whole. And although Manhattanville is known for a lot of things, the school is specifically known for their high rates of diversity. Hi, my name is Alexandra Woods. I'm a sophomore and I'm an African American. When I first arrived at Manhattanville, my first impressions, this school was kind of located, I would say in the woods. There's a lot of like tree area and stuff, um, kind of far out from things. You couldn't really walk to the store or anything, but very small school um, in the middle of nowhere. My time at Manhattanville so far has been, it's had its ups and downs, I would say, when I first came as a freshman. I definitely went through things that I've never experienced before being from where I am. And as of now, you know, I'm still going through the motions of just being subjected into a new atmosphere. And I'm steady learning, and I'm continually growing. Um, I know the odds are against me being a student of color, just looking at the things that have been proven in the past as far as statistics. I know that my skin color can be a problem. It's not like I make it a problem, but as far as how society sees me, I know that my degree will not mean a lot of things. It's about the effort and the work that I put like forward to it. So I can't say that the odds are against me, but I'm not going to like dwell on that or anything. But yeah. I am involved on campus by doing a number of things. So I'm a part of the Center for Inclusion. So what we do is all things inclusive. So basically we started doing events that center around inclusive um, behavior and inviting people in from different backgrounds and coming to speak. We have events, we have shows, we have Not Your Average Mondays, we just have tea talks, all type of stuff that you can all come in, feel free to join and just like get like the real kind of like tea on a lot of certain things. It's not like the Center for Inclusion, there's no holding back. So however you feel, that's like a safe haven for you to come and just talk however you want, sound however you want, be who you are. It's kind of like a safe haven for a lot of students on campus of color. Um, what else? The Clark Center. I do a lot of volunteer work, so I'm always in the Clark Center, running around soup kitchens, speak, hosting events, all type of things. And then I'm a resident advisor. So now I'm more hands-on with the residents of Manhattanville because I'm in their faces. I'm doing the paperwork. I'm seeing the problems. I'm fighting the issues. Um, you know, the main, I'm the first responder for a lot of situations, so I get to physically see what's going on rather than just, like, hearing it from an outsider. So I would say I'm very involved on campus. My involvement can definitely um, improve the experience of a student of color because me being the student of color and I'm so involved, I'm, like, the first hand, like, I can, like, speak as far as, like, like being in the midst of everything. So my role as a, res, a resident advisor, I'm like here living with the students and I'm the first responder for all the things. So I'm like, I'm looking at the situations, I'm here, I'm there. I'm not like hearing it from someone else. Like I see it with my own eyes, so I know what's going on. I'm looking at the paperwork. I'm hearing the residents' issues and complaints and their problems, like it's coming to me. So like I have these like facts that are like firsthand. Um, Center for Inclusion, we have a lot of students wandering there and they have these issues and problems they want to talk to us about. So that's like more knowledge. And then the Clark Center, um, you basically can see who's coming to volunteer to see who has a passion and what they have a passion for and just like where their heart is. So it's kind of like all of those things tying together of how like definitely come to me if you have an issue because I know a lot of stuff. <laughs> I feel like from Manhattanville, we definitely have the diversity, but the issue is we don't know how to deal with the diversity. So they have us all here and they just kind of throw us in this big circle and they're like free for all. So you really have to kind of find your way and you have to really tackle these issues alone. Um, I wouldn't say they do a good job as far as making everyone feel inclusive. Even though we have all these resources on campus, you know, it's like a funding issue going on or just certain things. But as a student of color, being submerged in this and not really feeling like I have like a, a support system or like, you know, di like different things, it definitely is kind of hard um, as far as the support that when you have everyone here who come from different backgrounds, how do you make it to where everyone feels welcome and everyone feels like they're being respected for who they are. So it's kind of, I would say, we kind of like there um, in a lot of ways. As Alexandria stated, the Center for Inclusion is a safe space for all students to go to. Students can go and speak their minds about any problems, goals, and passions they have in life. The Center for Inclusion is also known as a social justice space where all kinds of diverse topics that are going around in the world are discussed. 
This Manhattan Grove resident has quite a few things to express in terms of the overall diverse environment of the school, her classes, and who she is as a person. My name is Rain McNair. I'm a freshman and I'm Black American. Um, as a student of color, yes and no. Um, I think it's difficult for any university to be um, completely like focused on their diverse students because this is a liberal arts college and it's not um, for necessarily for um, people of color. You know, the majority of the school is um, white. So I feel like there definitely could be um, notions that are handled better for people like me, but um, I feel like it's going to take a longer time for everyone to really feel included because it's so predominantly white. To be honest, yes. <laughs> it's funny to think about, um, mainly because I know it's not uh, malicious or it's not rooted by hate, it's ignorance. And um, some professors aren't like... Um, aware of what they're doing so the questions that they will ask in class and sometimes if they try and refer to me a certain way um, it's not just me personally but um can't speak for other people but my friends have been in similar situations um so i just feel like uncomfortable in that sense but it gives me like room to um, really tell them what's going on and explain to them why they shouldn't be doing things like that. Um, it's just another, uh, another place for me to educate someone. So, yeah, I handle it pretty well, I think. So in that case, I feel like in that specific class, they push this agenda, um, like created by Mother Damon and how she kind of like laid the foundation for Manhattanville and accepting um, more diverse students into the institution, which is true, but I feel like there's too much credit given to her for that because um, it could definitely be better in terms, terms of like inclusion. Um, but me personally, I think it's more so how it is communicated through the class. Like, I feel like it needs to be acknowledged that um, the school wasn't always wasn't always included wasn't always inclusive of students of color. But it's almost like. professors and um, staff will know that this is true, but they like to sugarcoat it or not be real enough with you because we know it's a problem. It's evident, um, not just in the institution, but in society. So I feel like just be open and honest about what's really out there instead of trying to make it more palatable for um, maybe certain students, you know, for them to understand, for them to really like um, try and resonate with, you know, it's just be upfront about it, bottom line. I feel like within um, the next three years, um, I feel like I'm going to grow into myself more as a person because that's what growth is, but also... Like, I feel like I'll be more comfortable being independent in regards to, like, um, me focusing on my work or just, you know, being kind of, like, um, on my own or outcasted in a way. Not in a negative way, but, like, considering that um, I don't see many people in school that you know, can relate to me in a way or that try to relate to me too much and it just comes off badly. 
but I feel like I'm going to become more comfortable with that and hopefully the school environment will um, mold and change in years to come. Like most necessary changes, they take time to become reality. And when it comes to obtaining a more diverse environment, Manhattan Low College are slowly in the process of doing so. there are some improvements that need to be made, but um, I only think it's annoying. It's a little annoying because the because it is so good here, and I do think it still has so much more potential to be better that it's it's just a little annoying. But it is it's good here. I had a good time here. I had a great time here. Um, being a person of color on campus, I don't feel unincluded but I don't necessarily feel 100% included um, I feel like there's just like a lot of information that you don't know about and that aren't being said or recognized um, like for example the Center of Inclusion I didn't know necessarily and I still don't know necessarily about what they do or what they're for um, and like certain things that they have there like certain programs or like even the fact that there's a black student union I didn't know about that until sophomore, junior year, and it was late, and like I just didn't know that it was a thing or that we had this club, and um, I think it's definitely advertising and promoting that should be something that should be worked on in general for this school, but still especially for inclusion and different departments and things and what you can do for the school for a person of color or anybody who is technically a minority in this school. I haven't personally had an experience, but I do know a couple of people who have said they have at least felt uncomfortable um, with something. Um, I don't know, uh, they had, um, it was a certain class that they had or something particular that has to deal with, you know, people of color where they're asked a certain question on their perspective because obviously they are the person of color, but it's more of, oh, well, how did you feel? Like, I know that you weren't there, but could you speak on a little bit? Or automatically assuming that they would give how they feel or um, they just feel uncomfortable about the tone somebody uses or just certain things like that with both teachers and students that are involved with a, a situation. So I don't think the odds are necessarily against you, but you are always cautious and aware um, of what people say and how they say it. And you always have to be as a person of color and you always have to be aware of people's connotations and where they're coming from and just think about what you see. I don't know necessarily if in the next year there might be a change, but I definitely do think that there will be changes that are going to be involved. There already are changing um, a lot around here now, um, but I do think over the years it will change and hopefully it will change for the better. Um, but as far as like changing in a year, definitely not. That is, that's a lot of pressure and that's a lot of work and that's a lot of investment to try and change within a year, but definitely I do think that there is a change and I do hope that it is for the better um, in general for everything around here, but also specifically for, you know, people of color and minorities here at Manhattanville College and things like that, because it, it does need to change. It does need to be promoted and we are still a part of Manhattanville just as much as anybody else. and. We love it here just as much as anybody else, and we are just like everybody else. So, yeah, that's what I hope.